Hi, I'm Pat Deegan, co-founder of Psychogenic Technologies, and today we're going to go through a small PCB assembly run, pretty much from A to Z, using a pick-and-place machine and open PNP, focusing specifically on the five fails and problems encountered along the way and how I dealt with them. The run I did yesterday was with the light placer, but this will apply to any pick-and-place machine using open PNP. So come on in. Now that it doesn't need as much futzing and as a way to keep the lighting steady, when it's in use, the pick-and-place sits nicely below a standing desk. This isn't the very first run for this specific PCB, so the feeders are already all set up and it's just a matter of sticking them back in their spot. This is easy because I use little T and L brackets stuck to the table and I can just slide them back into the exact same spot. So I refill the holders and slide them back into place and the configuration is steady for the duration of the run. This project doesn't have many parts, but I still use different feeders uh, to separate the 0402s from the bigger parts. I arrange them in a circle to try and minimize travel getting the parts. The next step is to make those parts accessible. The trick here is to be gentle and use a finger to hold the tape down. Bloop! Ah, of course. But these were SOT 23s, so it wasn't so bad. Fail number one, not being gentle enough with the tape. The fix here is be more gentle, but man, am I itching for some sort of automated feeder system. With that out of the way, before any boards are pasted up and the timer is started, I like to do all my pre-flight checks. First thing is powering up and homing the machine. Though this barely ever happens uh, because I use these nice little printed dots to do the homing mark, uh, I start up the machine, power it up, home it, and then... Uh. Wow. That's not good. So mistake number two, failure to keep the work surface pristine. After wiping away the dust, homing went smoothly as usual. After calibrating the smallest nozzle tip, I checked the distance between the camera and the nozzle is still configured correct. Time, vibrations, cosmic rays, whatever, may have messed with it. Though it doesn't usually happen, it's nice to check before, you know, you're placing parts. In this case, configuration is little more than resetting the feeds. Open PNP's auto setup stuff is really awesome here. Because I want to check both the config and the heights, I use the nozzle tip that's going to be used to pick up the parts. In this case, it's nozzle two. It's a pretty good compromise for the smaller 0603 type parts. So I load that up and calibrate it. Though these were already configured, I use a little script I wrote to check all or most of the heights. This is easy as it uh, goes through all the enabled feeds and lowers down slowly to let you check and adjust the height if required. I will start board runs with the same nozzle tip to keep things nice and deterministic, and I manually calibrate it just to make sure all the lighting in the bottom camera issue with the light placer isn't the problem. Okay, time to play. So I paste up a single PCB and check the results. Beautiful Douglas. Beautiful Douglas. So it started off well, but there was another little problem waiting in the wings. Do you see it coming? Yeah, each board takes a lot of these 100 nano caps and I hadn't exposed enough. Now it's tempting to just unwrap them all from the start, uh, but there's a little bit of a danger if you've got to reset a feed and you've got hundreds of them in danger of being jiggled out of place. Mistake number three was that I was overly conservative when unwrapping the tape there, but more importantly that I didn't follow my usual system. Normally, when I order parts, I'll have the reference designators put on the packaging here. This helps for a few reasons, including knowing to expose more parts or even to add more feeds for a given component type. Then it was time for the 0402s. Even without bottom vision, they look really good. Finally, using the bigger nozzle number three tip, some RF jacks were placed and that was it for the first board. Next were two parts I didn't set up in open PNP because they're big and easy and I'm lazy. And anyways, I like to do a visual inspection after each board is populated. Okay, time for more boards. So I paste up a couple more PCBs. And now it's time to set up open PNP and hmm, there are two job files. And they have the same timestamp. Okay, I think it's this one. Yeah, they look the same. 
though it doesn't show immediately. This is fail number four. I got sloppy with those two versions of the file and it's gonna bite me down the line. So I set the position of the PCB and made sure the fiducials were recognized okay. I started it up and as before, everything went well for the first board's first component. When it came to the second PCB, however, Eeks indeed. Remember back when I was configuring that second board? Yeah, I forgot to set the depth or the Z position of the PCB. After setting that, we're back in business. Things proceed as expected for a good while, and then this. Just before changing the nozzle for the smaller parts, it places a multiplexer on one PCB, and then not the other. What? So that's why I had two versions of that job file, and I chose the wrong one. Here I would pay for that sloppiness. I let the job run to completion and everything went well. Then before anything else, I replaced the bad job file with the right one and it was time to place those missing components. Now I despise dull and repetitive tasks. It's why I built a pick and place machine after all. And checking boxes for hundred components is the definition of a dull and repetitive task. So this was a good opportunity to use one of the scripts I created. First I disabled all the components in one go and re-enabled only those that were missing. Ah, don't forget the fiducials. Okay, set that up and go. Now by disabling all my parts, I was a bit rash and lost all the configuration of those do not populate parts. Thankfully, I always tag these a particular way in KiCad and it's a simple task using another script to find them all and generate the list of DNP parts. With that list, back to placements enable script, paste it in, ta-da, everything as it should. Okay, paste me up the final board and we're ready to go. Thankfully, there isn't too much to say about that PCB. After all the tweaking, it went by uneventfully and if I'd had more to do, it would have gone pretty smoothly, I think. And here's the final result. Four PCBs came out very nice. One of them had a little bit of solder bridge on that tiny mux, but otherwise, really nice. So that's the entire little run and all the problems that were encountered along the way. You may have noticed they were all ID10T and PEPCAC errors, basically stupid pilot error. Which just goes to show that OpenPNP is a breeze to use. I've produced a good number of boards now, and it's really been a boon to my productivity. I hope you enjoyed this tour of a tiny production run using OpenPNP. Feel free to leave any comments or questions, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Cheers.